Hi, this is the old man with a fly rod. <laughs> I uh, am going to tie a scud this morning, and I'm sure you've seen a number of YouTubes on tying a scud, as have I. And um, I uh, have come across the combination of a lot of good things from a lot of these gentlemen that have tied scuds, and I've put all these good things I think together into a pattern that has been very successful for me. I was out uh, fishing yesterday on Lake Tanicomo. Uh, barometric pressure was steady. Maybe it was starting to fall a little bit. It was a high uh, cloud coverage and uh, there was a nice ripple on the lake. And um, that was about all, there was a bit of a variable wind, which was hard with a fly rod, so I did a lot of roll casting. I would let it, uh, the fly float past me, and then I would roll it back to the left and uh, let it float again, and roll it back to the left and float it again. So uh, I was out there uh, fishing, and by the way, on Lake Tandy Como, they had uh, one unit going uh, at the dam of uh, power generation, which is about 2,600 cubic feet per second coming down the river. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was almost idyllic. It was um, a nice current to uh, the river such that the fish didn't have a whole lot of time to look at my scud. Yet I've used this pattern in pretty still water and have had a lot of luck too. Anyway, so I was, uh, I went out to where I normally go and um, I went uh, out to about, oh, up to my th upper thighs as far as depth of the water. And um, I'm uh, doing this roll cast back and forth with this scud. Nothing, nothing. And I thought, well, let's try something else. And so I backed up a little bit for balance and stuff and in case the water was picking up uh, speed. So I backed up a little bit and um, I'm looking through my fly box. And while I'm looking through my fly box, my scud is hanging in the water on my right hand side in approximately knee deep water. And all of a sudden, a, like a 14 inch rainbow grabbed that scud and just took off. And what the dickens? And the first thought I had was to grab the line with my hand. Stupid. Because uh, when I uh, grabbed him, he had all the fight left in him, and he broke me off. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought, but even though I haven't, I wasn't the first in line for brains when they were handing them out, I did think to myself, I'm fishing too deep in the river. I gotta come in a little bit and fish this scud. And uh, sure enough, I went uh, in now only about knee deep and I was almost high sticking this scud. I'd roll cast it off to the left, almost perpendicular to me and uh, let it roll, gosh, only maybe five feet in front of me and then go past me. And uh, I caught 10 nice trout so things started to slow down a little bit only because i had caught so many fish in that one spot without moving i'm sure i had disturbed the water quite a bit so anyway i thought well i'll uh, i'll change flies one more time and um uh, go home and i thought well i told chris i'd be home uh around 3.30 or so, and it's already 3. And I thought, I'll just, I'll just keep this scud on, and I'll go up out another foot or so. And um, I roll cast it out to the left, and just maybe three feet further out than where I had been catching all these fish. And all of a sudden, my line took off like there was going to be no tomorrow. And I set the hook best I could. And um, I thought this puppy was going to get off. Oh, gosh, it was the fight of the year for me. And uh, it, it wasn't the biggest fish that I've caught this year. I have caught uh, a 20 and a 23-inch rainbow, 
but this one had fight. And I'm thinking, what do I have on the end of here just so I get to see it? Aren't we like that as fishermen? We just want to really see the fish before it breaks us off. So I went ahead and uh, I, uh, he's all around me and I had nice drags, that perfect drags that need take a run with me and zing would go that drag. And then I'd have to roll in a little bit and zing, he would go. And this took place for about 15 minutes. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but my wrist was starting to get sore. <laughs> and uh, this fish was fighting me. And I got my uh, landing net that was attached to a magnet on, on my back. And I, I got it and I put it between my legs. And then uh, I kept fighting him because I felt he was starting to tire out. And then uh, I took one, not swipe at him, but I had the uh, fishing net in the water. And here is this beautiful brown trout. And I um, I pulled him right to the net and he took off again. And I, oh man, I hope that wasn't my only chance. And so anyway, I uh, went ahead and I fought him a little bit more. And then on the second swipe, I landed him. And the funny part of the story was that I measured him against some measurements I have on my rod. If some of you guys fly fish, just take a magic marker to your fly rod, measure out 20 inches if you want to measure out 18 inches. Um, and then whenever you catch a fish, you don't have to take out a rule or anything. Just go ahead and line up the tail of that to your butt of your rod. And then now look where it falls in reference to the marks you've made on your rod. And uh, this thing came out to 18 inches. And it was a, it was a beautiful, chunky brown trout also. So I'm bringing this thing in and it's in my net and I'm, I'm starting to uh, take the uh, fly out of its mouth and I hear a voice behind me on the shore saying, boy, Tom caught a big one there. And I what the dickens? And I turn around and here's my very good friend, John Gantner, whom I fish with often. And uh, here, right in front of him, I had caught this 18-inch uh, brown trout. I mean, I'm the only thing I regret, guys, is John was there, I was there, I was so excited about that thing, and I tried not, I, I never hold the fish by the gills, but I'm holding it by the lower jaw, and I held it up for him to see. And the only thing I regret was uh, putting him back in the net, even though he had come off the um, fly, and he couldn't get you know caught up in anything in the net anymore. And take him to shore and uh, holding him in the water and then have John take my phone and take a picture of this uh, brown trout. It, it, yeah, there's bigger than 18 inch brown trout in this world for sure. But uh, he was chunky and a gorgeous fish. And um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So. Uh, I guess my point is now we're going to go ahead and tie that particular fly right now that caught that. And it was on a size 14 hook and it was an emerger hook, a nymph emerger. Um, yes, a scud, in fact it's called a scud emerger and it was tied number 14. I think it's a lightning strike hook that I buy. For some reason I like those hooks. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, tie these on and I'll try to remember everything that goes into this fly, but it's a fun one to tie. So uh, I'll leave you at this point. All right, we're going to uh, go ahead and tie that scud uh, that took up the vast majority of the uh, video I just gave you on, on my story about the brown trout I caught in this. Um, the temperature that day, by the way, was, oh, it was about 68. That was yesterday. Today, it's 48. So, yeah, the uh, barometric pressure was dropping, but for some reason, it didn't have an effect. The other thing I failed to mention in that uh, video was that uh, the reason I was catching them shallower is because uh, with the current being heavy in the center of the river, due to the uh, generators running, I have found out, and I've talked to guides, that uh, the fish like to 
gather along the shallower water and pick off the scuds that the uh, heavier water has churned up from the bottom of the river. So um, I thought uh, I should add that to it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie on a thread base. And um, I start off with uh, some pretty thin wire. I, I don't know, a thread, I should say. Of course, I'm nervous doing this in front of you guys. But anyway, I want to just get a nice base on there of a thread. And I'll take it uh, down the curve a little bit. No sense having a curved hook if you're not going to take advantage of the uh, illusion that this curve gives the fish that the uh, nymph or scud or whatever you're fishing is actually in a um, curled move getting ready to straighten out as it's fishing uh, going up the river. So let's get this over about out of the way of my lead or imitation lead, whatever you do. Now I'm going to go ahead, uh, probably it takes about five wraps. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do six and then I'll squeeze it off with my fingernail. And then this part I'm not too good at squeezing off with my fingernail, so I'll take um, scissors that I have uh, delegated just to cutting wire. And now I'm going to go ahead and push down that wire so it uh, just blends in nicely and the fish doesn't feel any sharp spot in its mouth when it takes this on. And then I'm going to squeeze these together. And uh, that gives me enough weight to get this down. And then we're going to go ahead and taper it on both sides. Now this excess, I uh, you always use a uh, razor blade for me. Don't ask me why, I just, uh, that's what works nice for me. Let's get this tightened up so it's not moving all over the place on my 1925 uh, vise here. But we're going to taper this down and get her down a little bit. And then what we're going to do before we go any further is we're going to tie on the antenna. The, it's not the, uh, for you beginners, tying on the antenna is not tying on a tail like it is for other um, flies. This is actually the uh, head of the fly, and it is um, where the antenna is. And uh, I still think, if you recall, I had quoted a famous fisherman, about um, what matters most is uh, the shape, uh, the size, and uh, then the color of uh, your fly. But I wish to add another one on, and I think I've done this before in other uh, videos, is that um, I think feel uh, is another aspect of the fly being... Um, uh, amiable to the fish and that is because uh, it'll hold it that many second longer in its mouth um, if it feels right where if it you know, all of a sudden just feels a sharp spot it's going to spit it out before you can say Aunt Louise so let's go ahead and tie on a little bit of pheas pheasant tail I'm going to cut off a little bit of well, I'll take a nice bunch, maybe at least five strands or so. And I'm going to cut those off. You don't need uh, the whole length of it. Put this back because my wife taught me to be organized. <laughs> at least she thinks that she taught me that. And then, uh, you know what? I don't get too uh, burnt out about, uh, gee, do I have it long enough, too long? I'd rather be on the air of too long than not long enough because I uh, can cut this uh, shorter if I need to. And it looks like I am on this one. 
And I love that it's splaying out. You see that? I've got this thread tight enough that it's splaying out my antenna. That is a very nice look. And now, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this to bulk up my body in the center. The scud should be a little thicker right in the center. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, yeah, I think that's going to be sufficient. And, uh, yeah, I spent two years in Peru, South America. So I have a little bit of Spanish. But uh, any uh, Latino out there that may be watching me will realize that I need mas practicar con mi español. <laughs> Don't get a lot of practice with my Spanish anymore. I did when I was practicing dentistry. You know, different people would come in. So that body is, gee, that's a nice shape. It's tapered from both sides coming in with the bulk right in the center. Uh, now I'm going to uh, tie on a uh, wire. And as I've told you before, for you beginners, and this is a good beginning fly. It just, it's one step up from that orange uh, scud I taught you. And... Uh, we're going to cut off a little piece of uh, like 32 gauge wire that I get from uh, Michael's um, in the uh, floral arrangement department, by the way. So I'm going to tie this. I'm going to tie it towards me. Uh, the wire is going to be towards me because I want to make sure it's covered. And I don't have it shining through somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and tie that. Now, what happens is when I get to the end of this thick body and I tie it down, that really pulls it tight against the uh, hook. And now there's a bend in the wire, and it'd be very hard to pull that wire out of there. Gosh, Sigurds, you're so smart. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tie on. I like, uh, for my scud bag, I like using Swiss straw. Um, I've heard other people say the same thing in that you can tear it off very nicely, right, you know, the thickness you want. And that's about not the thickness I want. I want something a little wider than that. I like it to go down. I like it to take up at least half of my body. So we're going to go ahead and tear that right there and take it on down. And I think that's going to be good. That's going to be good, real good. So now there's a little curvature in it, and I'm going to hold that right on there. And that uh, wrinkles up nicely. And I'm going to bring it back a little bit. And now I'm going to tie that uh, scud backing on. And I'm going to make sure that it's tied so that when I pull it back over, it's over the top. See what I'm saying? So I tie that also all the way down to the bend. And then I'm going to come back up a little bit. Fun, fun fly to tie. Um, maybe I go overboard. I was talking to John, and I was showing him the one that caught the brown trout, which was this pattern. And he says, yeah, he says, my problem is I like to... Uh, I like to tie fly so rapidly that uh, sometimes I sacrifice uh, the looks of it for how many I can put out. And uh, I, can, I can get that. It's, you know, hey, look, whatever catches the fish. And if there's anybody who knows how to catch fish, it's John Gantner, my buddy. All right, I think we're pretty good here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, if this was a size... 16 hook, I would tie on an ostrich harrow now, and once the ostrich harrow is on, that would give me my legs as I pull down. Uh, but on the size 14, I think the legs come out a little bit too small. So I do something I hate doing because I'm not very good at it, and that's dub this thing. And I use a little bit of... Um, Hairline dark olive brown dubbing. I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope so. Uh, let's see if I put it up here. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. 
And as anybody in the world tells you, just go ahead and start with just a thin amount on there on your thread. And because you want the bulk to be right in the center again, so I'm just going to wet my fingers and then I'm going to put on a little bit of dubbing right there, twirl it on there, and keep it thin because you know what? You can go ahead and add more uh, if you need to. And that's pretty much what I want. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll go around and get this puppy dubbed. And these, these are going to uh, be your legs. And now we're going to start right there. And that's enough for right there. Let's get started towards the center where I want it really thick compared to the other spots. Beautiful. Oh, Tom, you're so good. It hurts. There we go. Now, that's too much. So let's pull it off. We're done. That's good. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure that. And I'm going to put in a half hitch. And many of you know this already, but, you know, you have your bodkin like this. And the reason there's a hole in the, on the bottom is you can go ahead and wrap this around your instrument. And then it just comes right off and gives you a half inch. Half inch, real nice. Like that. Okay. All right. So there we go. And um, I'm not too concerned about looks, but I am going to go ahead and wet my fingers and pull this stuff down. It's going to eventually be the be the um, legs. Now let's go ahead and pull our uh, body scud back on there. And I'm pulling pretty tight on this right now. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie it on and tie it on and tie it on and then I'm going to go behind it and tie it and then I'll, hey, come on, let's, these half hitches are so easy, let's just do it again and there's no way I needed a, um, a wing coming out the side here so we'll trim this excess, uh, excess hair ear fuzz off there we go. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, cut that off right there as close as we can. Good. Very good. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Now we got our wire, and um, I'm going to go ahead. Let, I think I did this already, but we'll just make sure I got a half inch, a half inch on there to, because I'm going to pull my thread over to the side to be out of the way while I go ahead and uh, start segmenting that body with a um, wire, my 32 gauge wire. You know what? You got to be careful that you don't fool around with these antenna now. They look so gorgeous. Make sure your wire isn't caught up in those. And then go ahead and start coming around. And some people go uh, rather than clockwise, go counterclockwise. And uh, their reasoning is really good. Uh, the only thing is I have not had a problem with uh, the wire coming off. I'm going to get probably four wraps on here as far as the... Um, well, I want this to look pretty darn equal, so... And I think I'll do one more right towards the top here. Good. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my thread and pull the uh, wire towards me. And we're going to go ahead and wind it up a little bit. And just go around this wire a little bit more. One more. 
and then we're going to go ahead and tie it off towards the front a little bit. Now some guys helicopter here. I'm not good at that. Doggone it. I'm just not good at helicoptering things here. So I'm going to take my uh, scissors that are meant for metal and then I'm going to take my thumb nail and bend that thing around and make sure it's buried into there and I don't feel it with my fingernail of uh, my fingers I should say my thumb and therefore the fish isn't going to feel anything sharp so that's great all right so now I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, just uh, tie this off with uh, Okay, let's do a good tie off here. One, two, three, that's plenty. And bring that out like that. There we go. And take my my little razor blade because I can see it so well. There we go. Alright now uh, we're looking pretty good here. And I'm going to go ahead and, gosh, I found these at Harbor House. Are these cool or what? I mean, they're a real stiff brush. I forgot what they're made for cleaning out. Uh, maybe after a uh, colonoscopy or something. I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, nasal cleaners? Nah, that wouldn't work very well. No, it's a clean something mechanical, but uh, I, these are just different uh, diameters, and you can get these at Harbor Freight, and uh, just take a picture off the screen and take it to Harbor Freight and say, that's what I'm looking for. comes on a ring like this, so I can just hang it up on my other material, but all my stars, do these things brush out your legs nicely? See it? See my legs starting to come out from... Some guys like to pick them out. I just like to brush them out. They'll come out nice. And there we are. That's perfect. That's perfect. I trim it up a little bit where I don't want any. So I will trim more after I take this off. But I just, I just like to have a visual where I'm at. There we go. All right. Now, um, there's something I've been doing <laughs> Lately, that really sounds weird, but nah, so am I. I'm weird. But uh, it's what's really sad is when you're old and rear, uh, weird. So I'm going to take this um, flashback stuff. Isn't that cool? This little pearl flashback stuff. Now, some guys uh, will put this uh, into the... Um, segments like that you know and and just hang it down and make it extra legs i think that's overdoing it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a little uh super glue and i'm going to lay a little bead of super glue along here and just lay that pearl wrap in there and um let me get my bodkin here to help me direct this super glue. Let me get my wife's best uh, bathroom wash rag that she uh, just inherited from her great grandmother, but I use it. And we're just going to lay down a little bit of super glue there. And then we're going to dry it just a touch. And by the time I wipe this off and put it in my styrene, It'll be fine. My bodkin will be. So let's close this up. And by now, as you know, if you got anybody on your fingers, you know it's sticky already. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this pearl back and just lay it right on top of the fly. There we go. Blow on that and let that dry a little bit, just a touch. The reason I do that is that I'm now going to put on some clear resin to make a nice hump on here and a casing for my fly. 
Am I doing overkill? Maybe. But you know what? It's a uh, kind of a cloudy 48 degree day. I'm not going to go fishing. I love to tie flies and I got enough scuds already to fill my fly box. So um, I'm going to take some time and, and, and try this out. Now, the point is uh, I need to test this against other uh, flies. Okay, so now, now that that super glue is probably starting to set up, I'm going to go ahead and cut this excess off. And cut this excess off a little bit right there we go. That's all I got is a little bit of flashback on the top here. And what happens, this is really cool, guys, this is really cool, is that when you put on your uh, clear resin, it diffuses the colors that come off of that, and it's just got to be an attractor to uh, the fish as they're looking at that. I wish I could get that just a touch closer. Maybe I can grab this just a little bit right here. Nope, it's already in the super glue. So we'll go ahead and make sure we get a little resin over that right there. Good. And we'll put a little resin all over the top here. And what I usually do is I take my resin and I put it in like so. And then I have my bodkin right next to it, and I just direct it at the same time I'm putting it on like that. So if I did it from this side, I wouldn't do a very good job. So I'm going to do it from the side that kind of has you out of the scene. But uh, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, spreading a little clear resin on top of that fly. And I tend to have it come over to my side too much. So I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, right in the center. See that hump? Oh, I love that hump. Ooh, yes. So let's hit that with the light. Uh, usually I count to 30. One, two. All right, there we go. Now, if you look at that fly, I don't know if you can see from your side. Let's see if I can uh, turn that a little bit and, and, and you take a look, get the cover back on this before I drop it on the floor, which is invariably happening. I'm going to loosen this and just rotate this a little bit and see if you see that uh, iridescence coming out of the back of that. Isn't that pretty? That fish may not like it, but I sure like it. It's not overdone, I mean, or not. It's just maybe a little bit of an attractor for uh, the fish to look at and say that's probably one of the best backs to a scud I've ever seen. I'm eating that sucker. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. All right, now the last thing we're going to do is uh, cut the legs e even with that. And then I may, um, I may actually uh, cut the antenna down a little bit too. So there we are, and let's just cut those puppies down a little bit. And that is my scud. I don't know what this is across, the, no, that's, that's fine, okay, good. Um, but I do think the antenna are a little bit long, so let's just trim them about right there. And get this side too. Oh, I want to bite this thing. Uh, so let me put it back on. That's our finished product. Um, I could put a little bit more uh, resin on the top to give a little bit more of a hump there. But uh, I'm pretty darn satisfied with that. Pretty darn satisfied with it. Um, the only thing I can say is uh, I had one of these on and I was uh, fishing that puppy and uh, I must have caught 10 fish or so. Finally, I, it was one of the scuds and I had put a second layer of resin on top of the first layer and I needed to talk to a chemist 
because uh, it's light cured. And um, I don't know if you need to roughen up that first layer before you put the second layer in, because here was the second layer starting to disengage from the first layer after catching 10 fish. And um, I only found that out because after I caught like my 10th fish, I, uh, on the same scud, I uh, said, boy, things have really slowed down while I brought this thing in up. And it looked like one of those Volkswagens. I don't know if you guys have seen them where it's got the Mickey Mouse ears. And when the wind comes up, they, they go down. And then when the wind stops on the stupid Volkswagen, the ears come back up. Well, <laughs> that's how the fly was looking. Hey, I've kept you long enough. But uh, I think this is the pattern I have uh, accepted now as my fly pattern. And of course, that could change in another week. I'm kind of anxious to see if that little bit of uh, flashaboo on the top uh, does a number or if it's totally useless. I got a feeling in stiller water it's really going to attract fish. But uh, hey, we'll see, okay? Thanks for watching, and um, any questions, uh, just let me know. And uh, I'm gonna turn this sucker off now.